Good morning, and welcome to Meditation Lesson 2, Video 12. So here's the thing. If this is your first time tuning into this talking head, then you'll want to start with um, Meditation Lesson 1, Video 1. So right below this video, you should see a bunch of links. If you don't, all you need to do is get to the YouTube dedicated page. Find the little teeny YouTube icon right down here. Give that a click or two. That should take you right there. And there's more links than there is space on the screen. So find the little show more button right down here. Give that a click. The first thing you'll see is a link that reads... Um, the series of 52 lessons begins with Meditation Lesson 1, Video 1, a rose by any other name. Click the link below that, it'll take you right there. Okay, I'm going to assume that everyone who's watching this video has already seen the 40 or 50 plus videos that went before it. I'm going to assume we've already used one of the links below to download the latest version of the free PDF. So, having said that, join me on page 15 of the first set of lesson texts. Now, Sometimes the lesson texts are a, bit, are a bit wonky with the numbering. You know this is the right page if it begins with the phrase, He is brilliant white and radiates the six lights of white, green, yellow, blue, red, and black. If that's what you see at the top of page 15, beneath the three links, then that is exactly right. Join me, please, for the third a quatrain on page 15. It uh, begins, Adorned with ornaments of silks and jewels. So that's a short line with a lot of meaning. If you've already downloaded your free and printed out your free image of Lama Chenre Zig, let me see. Actually, it would probably be easier if we go back to page 14 and take a gander at that line drawing. If you look carefully, you'll notice that he's wearing a skirt just like, your, just like a monk does. And that skirt is tied with a belt. On his shoulders, you'll notice a shawl. And loosely draped over or, or, around the back of his neck is a scarf. So those are four garments of silk. Now what you cannot tell from this image, you can only tell if you examine a statue. In fact, I'll get a statue right now. Okay, so here's a statue of Forum Chinri Zig. If you look very carefully behind, you'll notice that the, as opposed to the European crowns, which were circular, um, the crowns depicted in Buddhist art are semicircular. They only form a horseshoe, as opposed to a, um, a ring. And so the back of the crown is, is tied. And so According to the iconography, this tie is a piece of silk. So let's explore that for a minute. You have the skirt, the belt, the shawl, the scarf, and the crown tie. Five. There are no coincidences in Buddhist iconography. The five here represents the five wisdoms of the five Buddhas that come about by being first by being aware of each of the five mental poisons when they manifest, and then bringing them into the path of letting go, just like you were taught in the 40 videos of the first lesson. 
So if you haven't watched those 40 videos, you're really missing out. In fact, this is not the stuff. The, the, the techniques of Lesson 2 are built on the techniques of Lesson 1. you got to watch those videos. you got to do the homework that it teaches. That, for, that first lesson, that first set of videos teaches a nine-minute practice you need to do every morning and every evening if you're tend to become a Buddha this lifetime, no less this year. So the five garments represent the fact that simply by being aware of our shortcomings, bringing them into the path, letting go of them, we give birth to the five wisdoms that gave birth to the five Buddha families. Pretty cool stuff. Now does that mean you got to believe all this stuff? No. But it's a very empowering idea to explore. That rather than by rather than suppressing or repressing um, or trying to replace, we can simply be honest and authentic with with ourselves and our companions with what we feel, and then we can do something really constructive with that what we feel. We can be aware of our rage without punching the wall. We can be aware of our, our sadness without slipping into depression. We can be aware of our fear without going into a panic. Those are very powerful, powerful things. We can be aware of our jealousy without being a bastard. We can be aware of our pride without becoming a fool. Well, we also talked about the ornaments. Well, go back with me now to page 14 of your practice text. Take a close look at that line drawing, and you'll notice that there are anklets on the ankles. There are that's one. There are bracelets at the wrists. That's two. There are armlets on the arms. That's three. There's a set of a triple necklace at the throat, chest, and belly. That's four. There are two earrings, a set of earrings, and a crown. That's a total of six. And once again, numerically there are no coincidences in Buddhist iconography. They've had a lot of time to work this stuff out. And so it could be argued that the six ornaments represent the six perfections of a bodhisattva that, regener that we generate by first marrying the contemplations of the long rim with the six-syllable mantra of Chen Rei Zig, and then relaxing into our practice of Chag Chain. If you don't know what Chag Chain is, if you don't know what long rim is, if you don't know what the six-syllable mantra is, then you haven't watched the 40 videos of the first lesson. Go back catch up. It won't take you very long. So let me check the length of this video. I've been jabbering at you for a little more than eight minutes and that's sufficient. So if you put it all together you get the six garments that represent um, the six perfections of a bodhisattva. Got the, I'm, I take it back. You've got the six ornaments that represent the six perfections of Bodhisattva. You've got the five garments that, re that refer to the five wisdoms. Everything about this is not about devotion. It's not about praying to a being greater than yourself, hoping for blessings. It's following the example of a schlub who walked the same path that you're already on and completed it. You do what he did, you'll accomplish the, the results that he accomplished. You find a good teacher whose uh, techniques work when you apply them twice a day every day. Then if you follow his instructions, you'll accomplish what he accomplished. It's just that simple. Blind faith does not enter into it. Well, there you go, my friends. It's Friday, so I wish you a beautiful weekend. I thank you for your time and your attention. Thank you for watching my videos, doing your homework, 
making an occasional donation to feed a monk. Uh, and I bless you with this benediction. May you and yours be healthy and happy. Mani Padme Hum. Before you go, I want to remind you to find the thumbs up button. Should be, oh gosh, right around here. That's the like button. That should reveal about three social network buttons. Give them each a click. Make sure this stuff gets circulated around the internet. May you and yours be healthy and happy. Oh yes, one last thing. I think the third link below this video is, allows you to register for the next series of weekly webinars that begins tonight. I'll see you there. Bye-bye.